One of the things that I also love about chocolate is that it makes everybody smile. And as I look at my camera person, he's behind there smiling too. Because people just, even if you don't like chocolate, it makes people smile. It's, it's, it's something happy. Oh, did you hear that? That was a beep. That means that we can add our seed. Not only am I a dental hygienist, but my husband is a dentist. So for a while, when I would be selling things, he would say, I can't go with you. And now, actually, I'll be honest with you, we have patients who call me to buy our chocolate. Hello, my name is Barbara, and I'm the owner of Lady Cane Sweet Treats. My passion in life is making chocolate, and being at the tempering machine is my happy place. So today I'm happy to share some of the things, information with you. We're going to talk a little bit about how to temper chocolate. And one of the things we're going to talk about is the difference between real chocolate and compound or confectionery chocolate. Most people don't know that there's a difference. These two lollipops look very similar. One is confection and one is real chocolate. The difference is, is that confection is made with a palm or canola oil, which is a liquid, versus chocolate, which has cocoa butter in it, which is, it's not gonna come out because it's a solid. Yes, it is. Can we stop that? <laughs> there is a difference in taste between chocolate and compound um, because compound is made with the oil. It does not have the rich flavors of the chocolate, which has the cocoa butters and very high ingredients. Now, there are advantages to both of them. When you use a compound, it's very, very easy to use. It can be placed into a warmer and it, this will melt and then we can, this is ready to use. Real chocolate needs to be tempered. And what that means is that the temperature needs to go up, it needs to come down, and then it needs to rise again. And what this does is that it stabilizes the crystals in the chocolate, which gives it its color, its shine, and its snap. To do that, we use a tempering machine. Now, one of the differences between the confection and real chocolate is, is that when a tempering machine, you can see that you have two different compartments. Now, most machines are larger. This is a very small one. This holds about a pound and a half of chocolate. And the warmer is simply that. It can be warmed in a microwave. It's very difficult to temper chocolate in a microwave. What we're going to do is we're going to place some chocolate into the machine. And I'm going to be putting the chocolate into this back area because this is going to be the melting area. And then this is where the melted chocolate will go into. There are different settings on this machine. There's for white, for milk, and for dark chocolate. And that's because they need to be tempered at different temperatures. So we're starting off at 71.5, and then what will happen is that the temperature will rise, and again, as I said, it will come down, and then it will rise again, and that will give us what we're looking for in the chocolate. And we can stir this, and as you can see, this is starting to melt. This can be done in a, in a double boiler, or as I said, in the microwave. The nice thing about the confections is that you can do them any place. You don't need a machine, but also this isn't affected by the weather, the way chocolate is. Uh, it uh, usually comes out very smooth, very glossy. It's a much, much easier product to use depending on what your, your end results are. So I'm gonna stir this up a little bit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make some molds today. And these are lollipop sticks that you can buy at any of the local stores. And I'm taking the sticks and I'm just placing them into the molds with enough space into the chocolate that they'll stay. And I'm going to take my ladle and I'm going to pour the chocolate into the mold. I want to make sure that I'm securing the, the lollipop stick. One of the things that you can notice is that there's a big difference in the time that it takes for the chocolate, for the confection to melt versus the chocolate to temper. And I'm gonna give this a little bit of a shake. 
and I don't know if you can see the way it's in here. And then we're going to do the, we'll do the other two. And then we, we can put this in the refrigerator, which will help it to uh, set up a little bit faster. As I said, working with chocolate is my happy place. I love what I do. I'm actually a dental hygienist by profession. But one of the things that I love about chocolate is that everybody smiles when you tell them you make chocolate. When you tell them you're a dental hygienist, they actually cover their teeth. And there are a lot of wonderful things you can do. This is a great activity with children. The nice thing about the confection, as I said, is that it's very easy to use. It comes in many different colors so that you can make different molds with, with bright colors if you want. And it's also less expensive than, than real chocolate. I'm just going to take this and put it over in the refrigerator. Excuse me for a minute. Okay, we're going to let that set. Now, I don't know if you can see in the machine, uh, but the chocolate is beginning to melt. And as I said, this is a much longer process. Normally, I work with the bigger machines. The machines come in uh, different sizes. There were countertops. There were big ones, obviously, that are made for the candy companies. Chocolate tends to discolor sometimes if you leave it in the sun or it can it can bloom if it's if the temperature isn't right you can get something like this and it's still usable versus your chocolate looking more like this. Now this chocolate can be remelted. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just that the fat content has come to the surface, which is why it's white. So now we play the wait game while we wait for the chocolate to temper. In the meantime, what we can do is we can also make some chocolate covered pretzels. Okay, I am going to use half a pretzel, pretzel versus a whole one, mainly because of the um, depth of this. And I'm gonna add more chocolate to this. Kids love to do this. It's, it's, a great, it's a great activity. You just have to be careful of, you know, that it doesn't get too hot. And we're going to take out some sprinkles because part of the fun is decorating them. I have my granddaughter come over and I have a lot of sprinkles and she has a blast doing the, uh, the sprinkles. I also like to do it in a tray. And the reason for that is that, it, you know, from using sprinkles, they go all over the place and it makes your mess a little easier to clean up. So we're gonna dip this into the chocolate into the confection. This is actually confection. And then I give it a little shake. And depending on how many, how much sprinkles you want, depends on how you're going to do this. You can put it down and you can sprinkle a little bit like this and you'll get a few. Well, that's quite a bit. You can dump it on. Or the other thing that I like to do sometimes is I'll put a whole bunch of sprinkles into my pan. And when I dip another one, what I do recommend, especially if you do this with children, is that you have lots of paper towels. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the, into the sprinkles and I'm going to put more on top of it. Now, although it looks the same, the difference is, is that when I pick up the first one, the back of it will be flat and will not have sprinkles on it. Just depends on what you want to do. You can cover these with caramel. You can cover them with marshmallows. You can just let your imagination go wild and have a good time. If you want the kids to have a great time, as I said, buy a bunch of sprinkles, line them up and let them have a good time. Then when they mix all of your sprinkles together, I recommend doing it on paper. You take it, all the sprinkles and you pour them into one of the empty containers. And the next time the kids come, you give them those sprinkles. And you know what? They'll have just as good a time. And they may have made a very nice concoction with their mixed sprinkles. This is going to take a few minutes to dry. As I said, these are non-pareils. Non-pareils are the little balls of sprinkles versus a sprinkle, which is flat. These are actually Christmas colors. Okay, 
I'm actually going to add some more chocolate because there isn't enough chocolate in here. And the other, now my temperature is up to 100 and, 104. Now, if you remember when we started out, I think it was 74. So now it's reach, starting to reach its peak and then it will go down a little bit. Lady Cane Sweets, we, um, I use only quality chocolate. I have been doing this for probably for quite a few years. Our name Lady Cane really comes from our first golden retriever. When my husband and I were married a year, we went to the mall to buy a ceiling fan and we came home with a golden retriever and we named her Lady and she was very special. And when I started my business, I named it after my golden retriever and we still have golden retrievers. And you can buy these chocolate confections Walmart has them uh, a lot. Michael's has them. Actually, I got these at the Dollar General, which I didn't know had them. And if you're wondering if you're going to be buying chocolate or confection when you're in a store and you're buying lollipops or something, if you look at the back on the ingredients, if it doesn't say cocoa butter, if it has an oil or palm oil, canola oil, that is a confection. That is the difference between real chocolate and a confection. And if your chocolate is deep enough, you can just dip this in. And then normally I shake it off a little bit because otherwise when you put it down, the chocolate spreads. And although you have lots of chocolate, which is delicious, it doesn't look as nice. And you can see how it's settling into the non pareils, which means that they'll be all over versus just being on the top. These make wonderful party favors, wonderful gifts. If you want to do something for your children for a holidays or for a birthday, let them make pretzel sticks. You can buy bags. The bags are also available, usually where you can find the uh, confections. They have all kinds of wonderful candy supplies, including the melter. If you don't want to buy the melter, again, you can do it in the microwave or you can do it in a double boiler. I happen to like the convenience of this because I'm not running back and forth to the microwave every 30 seconds. And we're still waiting for our chocolate to be in temper. <laughs> I think the first one is a dry. And you can tell when these are dry, they're not dry yet because uh, the confection will be very shiny and it will ha have a wet look to it. The temperature is going down, it's now 101. And again, the chocolate is melting in the back and coming over to the front. I used to live in New Jersey and I taught, taught at Columbia University for 14 years and then we moved to Vermont and I worked in private practice. I've worked in hospitals. I've uh, done a lot of dental health education. I was a clinical instructor at Columbia University in the uh, dental school, not in the dental hygiene department. I've always loved to bake. My family was a very, very good cooks, big bakers. And one day I decided that I was going to make cake pops which I did. They didn't always stay on the stick, but they, they were fun. And then I decided uh, I would dip Oreos. And I was talking to a friend of mine on the phone and I told her that I was going to start a business. And the phone call ended and the next day she called me and she said, I'd like to buy, I understand you're going into business. I'd like to buy some cookies from you. And I had honestly completely forgotten that I had mentioned this to her. So I said, that's fine. I said, let me bring them over. I want you to taste my product before you purchase it. So she did and she liked it and she bought it. What I didn't know at the time is that I was not using real chocolate. I was using confection chocolate. I did not know the difference between the two. What happened was I used that for a while and then my mom died and my husband and I went to Florida. And my husband said to me, when we were in Pennsylvania, Oh, we're right near this chocolate company. Why don't we go over? Well, four hours later, we ended up at this chocolate company and I ended up talking to somebody there and I went to the shop and I started to learn the difference between chocolate. And she said, we have a boot camp, and we'll teach you all about how to make chocolate, how to temper chocolate, what the difference is, what the qualities are. And I said, I want to be the first on the list. And she said to me, well, we haven't started it yet. And I said, well, I'm going to keep watching till you do. Lo and behold, I was the first to sign up and I went to this course. It was a three day course 
at, uh, at, at a chocolate company, a large chocolate company. And um, I'm using their products. I've been to many, many boot camps. There are a lot of different organizations in the chocolate industry that offer continuing education or education. I went to a week boot camp. I've been out to Barry Calibou in Chicago and studied extensively. I prefer to dip chocolate. There are a lot of fancy things that you can do with them. There are a lot of fillings that you can make, but this is fun. It's, it, I don't want to say it's easy because it's a lot of work, but it's something I can do with my family. I can, I can share with people. I just, I, I love it. I think about chocolate. I have chocolate with me wherever I go. I go to hotels and I bring chocolate. And when I call and make my reservation, when I say I'm the chocolate lady, they say, oh, we know who you are. Uh, and I, I just, I just love it. I can't, it's my happy place. I know I'm repeating myself, but everybody should have a place like I have, something that you love and that you're passionate about. But one of the things that I also love about chocolate is that it makes everybody smile. And as I look at my camera person, he's behind there smiling too. Because people just, even if you don't like chocolate, it makes people smile. It's, it's, it's something happy. And it's something that you can do. You can do it in your home. You can do it on a small scale. As I said, you can do it with the uh, confections, which are very easy. Or you can do it with tempering, which can take hours. <laughs> oh, did you hear that? That was a beep. That means that we can add our seed. Now, what that means is that our temperature is up to 108. And what we're going to do is we're going to put in pieces of chocolate. Now these are at, at room temperature. And the reason we do this is that we were talking about bringing the temperature up and then bringing it back down so that we could have the proper crystallization. And I'm going to be honest with you, some of it's guesswork. I don't mean with the crystallization, but how much to put in. And again, oh, and now I have to press Two, type of, two types of temper. I put it in extended temper because I want it to be tempered longer. And again, now we wait. So chocolate is a lot of waiting. What I do very often is I will get uh, my chocolate going early in the day so that it's tempering while I'm setting up other things. Okay, so this made a little bit of a liar out of me, but this is the one that we just dipped one side and you can see the back, it's flat with just chocolate. And this is one where we dipped, we put the, the non prels in, and then we put the chocolate in. So you can see that it's not much of a difference. It just depends on what you do. And I mean, cost can be a factor because obviously if you're doing all the sides, you're going to need more non prels than if you're just doing three of the sides. It's just a choice of the right or wrong. The other thing is you wanna make sure that your hands are always clean, especially if you're using these because you want to try not to introduce it into your product. So we've taken the confection, the molded confections out of the refrigerator. Oh, excuse me, that's my tempering machine, which means that I have to remove my seed. The temperature is now down to 90. Remember to got up to 103. And then what I do is I remove the seed, as I said, is just the cold, the uh, room temperature chocolate. Okay, so now, now I'm going to wait, and I have to wait for another beep, and then it will be ready to use. Okay, so we've, we've flipped our mold. Okay, so these are the confections. We're going to flip our mold over and pop the pops out. And as you can see, they came out beautifully. They do need to be trimmed a little bit. You can do this with your finger. You can do this with a, um, you can do it with a, a, a knife. Uh, very often I do it with a, uh, a carrot peeler. I have a special peeler. And then this is what these look like. And they came out beautifully. There's nothing wrong with these. It's just that you can't, if you're selling them, you cannot sell these as chocolate. You have to sell them as confection. Okay, and then we're going to pop these out again. And then these are the solid chocolate lollipops. And you can see, among other things, the difference in the time is tremendous. Of course, the difference in the quality of the product is also different. But, you know, it depends on what you're doing, um, which you prefer. I mean, personally, I'm a chocolatier. I like using chocolate.
but it, using the confections, which I haven't done in a long time, I'm impressed with how easy it is, because honestly, I've, I've forgotten. And, and it, it does turn out a very nice looking product. It just will not taste the same. Thank you very much for being here today. It's been a pleasure. And I hope that you try these things. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you very much.